Now, how to experience God's love and be motivated by God's love. And then, later I will introduce briefly some of my teachings, but I only have a short time, so I will go quickly. Uh, this is the core of my teachings. To live in the love of God and to be motivated by God's love. Many people grow up in despair, sadness, you know, and rejection, and it's hard for most people to understand God's love. Or punishment. You know, when people are punished so much, they, you know, they don't, cannot believe that God can forgive them while they are sinners. Mm. Or being accused by people, even pastors, you know, very often we face, you know, accusation. People say, you're not doing a good job. You know, even in churches, there can be much legalism. When, you know, there is not a good distinction of law and grace. That when we have a balance of law and grace, then it will be, you know, that it will be grace-oriented, love-oriented, and then motivated to serve God. But very often, it's very true that, that people emphasize on the law because when we grow up, it's always the law. You know, you have to be good, you have to do this, do that. Now, when we believe in Jesus, we're supposed to be, you know, uh, living in love. But the fact is, many people make obedience like a pressure. Or you have to, you know, people demand us to perform well. Or much comparison, you're not as good as the other pastor. Mm. And, or much accusation, you're not doing well. Even in marriage, you know, a lot of times people will say, Wow, it's so wonderful you do this for me, I'm thankful for you. Instead people will say, Wow, someone, someone else's husband is better than you. Yeah. Or, uh, you, you didn't wash the dishes, you didn't... Uh, you know, take care of the home. Things like that. People are used to accusation. Now, here's my the picture of my me and my wife. I, you know, I live in love, and I want to live in the love in the world too, with my wife and with with the people around me. That when we live like that, we can enjoy God. But a lot of people can live in legalism. You know, Christianity without love of God can be strong legalism. It has, can give us a lot of pressure. And even pastors are under pressure to perform. And very often Christians and pastors feel lonely. Because we feel everyone is demanding us something. I have to do this, do that. And it's so difficult. And now, there are different levels to enter God's love. And now, I hope this will not be just one message for you. Uh, it will be the life message. This is my life message. That in every message, I always tell people how wonderful God is, how good it is. And also, I also talk about the holiness of God. I like the love of God and I like the holiness of God. Everything about Him is beautiful. The first level is knowing His love. Many people know His love. The second level is believing that God is love. And the third is believe in His love even when it is difficult. For instance, if, I mean, I'm just saying, for instance, if one of us is kicked out of our church, do you still believe God loves you? <laughs> very hard. Very hard. We will say, well, if God loves me, that will happen to me. But let me tell you, sometimes you kick out of a church, you can go into a bigger ministry. If you're following God, you can go into a bigger ministry. I left the traditional church, but I went into a bigger ministry. I was in the traditional church and I experienced the Holy Spirit. And when the evangelist from Argentina laid hand on me, I experienced power, like electricity, enter me. And the love of God filled my heart so strong. I cried for a long time. I, I experienced the love of God, the peace of God, the freedom of God. I felt like in heaven. And I said, I never knew I can experience God like that. And I spent a long time praying. And one day I cried to Jesus, Lord Jesus! <laughs> and His power went through me. I said, this is wonderful. I can experience Him right away. And I cried again, Jesus, again. And one day I started to experience joy. Every time I pray, even in the middle of the night when I think of Jesus, I can experience His, his joy. And now I can experience His love. And even people I pray for can experience love. On the other day in the church here, I demonstrate that. A lady come out, I just think of the love of God. Just keep loving God. 
without touching her. She felt overwhelming love of God coming to her. Now we can, when we live in the love of God, we know God is blessing people. We're not under pressure. We can relax and we can serve God with joy and freedom. And it's wonderful. I have gone through difficulties myself and God trained me through those difficult times to trust in Him, to know that He is the one in control. Now, Christians all believe that. We all say that all the time. But when difficulties come to us, very often we cannot believe that. But hopefully we can say, yes, the Lord is in control. Everything I experience, the voice of the Holy Spirit in me, how I see people change, how I taste the food, everything I can see God's love. So I think of God's love all the time and I find that the more I think of God's love, the more I'm motivated. And then, number four, experience God's love in prayer time and in daily life. Anytime we think of Jesus, oh, and then we can experience His love. And it's possible. And number five, enjoy God's love. That every day we say, I enjoy life, I enjoy God, because God is so real. And that motivated by God's love to be changed, to serve God. You know, I'm 65 and I, I'm willing to live as long as God allows me to, I want to go to different places. I don't want to live, you know, just to enjoy myself. I want to live a life to bless people. That's why I go to places, some places are not like here. This place is clean, you know. I've gone to places the restroom really smell bad. <laughs> And you can see worms and flies. I still go there because I'm motivated. Because they need the love of Jesus and need to know how to minister in the power of God and love of God. Now here I'm using this some of this illustration. Romans 8.32. Any of these Bible words we can read together. He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Now, in the redemption of Jesus, we can see a lot of grace and mercy. We were all sinners, but God loved us in eternity before we turned to Him. Before, you know, we, we trusted Him, we, when we rejected Him, God already loved us. And He had a plan. Now, for me, my story is long, I don't want to say it now, but God used books to talk to me. When I read a science book, He talked to me through the scientist who said that the you know, nature is, you know, it's wonderful, fully well designed and it's created by God. And I said, the scientists say that, that's wonderful. I, I said, I never knew that there could be God. And then, also God used different people to speak to me. And at the right time, He led me to Christ. And the situation was very special. Now for some of you, if you think about how you were saved, and also the day you were saved, how the joy of the Lord flowed to you, the love of God, the freedom, all this, you know, are the signs of His love. Now very often people experience the joy and the love, like just now in the praise and worship, they just say, I enjoy it. But we don't trace it to God. It's God who is here, and God is full of love and joy, and that's why when we worship Him, we experience His love and joy. Because God, you can imagine it, full of love and mercy and kindness and goodness, when it comes to you, whoa! <laughs> there is one person that you can see online that uh, his, the pastor is called Ian Fred uh, uh, McCormick. Ian McCormick. He died and he was a playboy at the time. But then God spoke to him in the last moment before he died to remember the, that his mother told him to pray. And he, he forgot how to pray and the Lord showed the Lord's prayer and then lead him to repentance and then when he died he first went to hell and then went to heaven and then he saw Jesus and then Jesus said do you want to stay here he said um, well there's you know I, I'm so bad he said I'm so bad and then he saw a wave coming from Jesus and when that wave came he cried actually you know that experience was when he was young. When he shared about it, it could be 20 years later or 30 years later. He was a mature man already. When he experienced that, he was a young man. And when he said that, he said, no one can be prepared to meet Jesus. When we meet Jesus, we'll know how loving he is, how good he is, 
How wonderful he is. He said when the wave came to him, he sensed the great love of God. And when he mentioned that, he cried. And I can understand that because that happened to me many times. That we can experience His love. That God loves us so much. And then He used different methods to draw us to Him. Even when we rejected Him, He kept talking to us in our heart to draw us to Him. You know, if someone rejects you five times, if you say, well, let's go out, He said, no, I don't want to. I don't want to see you. If someone rejects you five times, do you still want to talk to Him? You know, average Christian rejected Jesus hundreds of times a week. But Jesus still come, continue to move in the heart when we reject Him. When we say, we say, Jesus, I don't want to pray now. I, I just want to be alone. Leave me alone. But God keep talking to us to draw us to Him. He has so much patience and goodness and acceptance of us that in His salvation and in the way we grow, I say, God, you're so wonderful, so good. So when I think about how God spoke to me, I say, Lord, you're so wonderful, and I always enjoy Him. He also, along with Jesus, also gives us all things, that He gives us everything. Well, the more we seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to us. But very often, Christians, including pastors, will look at the difficulties. Instead of looking at the goodness of God, instead of looking at what God has done, and that's why very often we lost track of Jesus. And then Isaiah 49, 15, Can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. Now, are you two mothers here? Are you mothers? Do you mothers forget your baby somewhere? Sometimes, did you forget your baby in a shop or in a, in a bus, in a train? I'm sure no mother will forget the baby. You know, God cannot forget us. And He thinks about us all the time, even now. You know, when I pray, I always say, Lord, you're right here blessing me. Many people pray like this, Lord, come and bless me. Oh, I'm terrible. Come, come, come. It's always thinking God far away. But God is actually blessing us, thinking about us all the time. Now, when we have understand this love of God, we will have no worry, no fear, no pressure, but we say God is in control of everything. And also God's love is full of passion. In Zephaniah 317, very wonderful verse, He'll take great delight in you. He will quiet you with His love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Sometimes people think of God's love like a love of a principal. You know, the principal loves the students, but it's like, just like in a general way. Or a, a government official that loves the people, but is so far away. But here it says that God's love is full of feelings, that He will take great delight in us. He really likes us. Are there many people who really like you? And also, do many people really love you, look at you and love you? They want to get something from you. Don't, they don't necessarily love you. They just want to get something from you. It's hard to find someone that really loves you. My wife is wonderful. God has given me a wonderful wife. Sometimes, you know, she has to wake up early to go to work. And when we s s sleep sometimes, it was late. But she still kept looking at me. I said, close your eyes and go to sleep. She said, let me look for you, look at you for a longer time. Let me just do it for a longer time. She has so much love, and I so really appreciate her love, and I responded to her love. And God is like that too. God will say, let me look at you longer. And God is looking at us all the time. But we never think of God like that. Most people think of God giving us a lot of requirements. So, a lot of people think of, when they think of God, they say, I cannot do all the requirements. It's too much. But if we understand God, we say, God, it's like the prodigal son when he came home. Did he believe in his father's love? He thought he would just return as a servant. And then the father hugged him and kissed him. He was not convinced. He still said, Father, I have sinned against you. I have sinned against heaven. And, you know, I'm not worthy to be your son. He said that after the father kissed him and hugged him. He could not believe. Many Christians 
And I would say many pastors don't really believe God is loving us every second. God is accepting us every second and He's rejoicing over us with singing. He's, wow, 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 hi, <laughs> When you go to heaven, whoa, so happy to see you. God is full of love. It's unthinkable because we just don't find that kind of love here. We don't find, don't find that here. Many people in your congregation, I have to say, they like you because you do something for them. But very often they're not thinking of what they can do for you. I mean, some people might, but most people want to get something from you. But God is always thinking of what He can give us. Hallelujah. And God ministered to us all the time, forever. Psalm 139 verse 5. You have enclosed me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Now, some people say, where is he? Is he really laying his hand upon me? Is he blessing me? Now think of the time when we sin, He will come to us and talk to us. Even when we reject Him, then He will come to talk to us. So He will also do it when we are not sinning. When we, especially when we pray to God, but even when you're not praying to God, He is there blessing you. He talks to us all the time. Sometimes we hear God's voice when you are not praying, right? For me too. Sometimes I'm doing some other things, suddenly God's voice came and told me how to teach, how to help people. And that's how wonderful God is. He's ministering to us all the time. You know, there's many black people, African people, were taken to, Af to America and some other places to be slaves. I'm very sad to say that that's a fact. And many, many of these slaves suffer a lot. I saw in the movie, a white man sit on a chair and then there were a few black boys running around and then he told one to lie down and pull up the shirt and then put his feet on the tummy to keep his feet warm. Now that is not the worst kind of service, but it's a shameful way. When you think about a slave, would, would they be very happy? They would not, they would not be serving willingly, but they have to. Is God our slave? No, but he serves us more than any slaves. And when he serves us, he's happy. Yeah. He's, he likes us. He wants to bless us. You know, the more we understand God, let me tell you, when I have time, I always look at everything I think about God. Even your chair, the plastic, came from rubber tree. The clothing came from cotton plants, the cotton that we have. And Everything we see, the metal, came from God's creation. And our body is so wonderfully made. Our food is so delicious. Everything God is, has done and the heaven is so wonderful. So when I think of God, I really like Him. And I'm melted by His love. So in my prayer, I go like this. Oh, Jesus, you love me so much. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> I will always declare the love of God first before I respond to Him. So I have the prayer of grace. Jesus is blessing me right now. He's blessing each one of us here right now. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, you are right here blessing us. So every time I pray, I always know that. And I believe that. And I, every morning when I wake up, the first thing, yes. God is loving me. Hallelujah. I can rejoice in Him. And that way I have the motivation to serve Him. And I know that my life is in His hands. And He blessed me. He provides for me so I can go to different countries. And I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to bless anyone. On the internet, many people look for me. And I will help them for free. Bless people for free. Because God blesses us all the time. And God's love is for us so that we can be satisfied with the love of God so that we can rejoice all the days of our life. We'll be filled with joy all the days of our life. And many Christians live like this. Uh, life is difficult. Uh, I have no strength. Many people live like that. <laughs> but as, how many Christians do you see in a church that is always joyful even in the midst of difficulties? Always praising God, always willing to serve God. You know, some people serve God, they tell, 
they say, well, I serve God because God tells me I, I have to do it. But how many people say, I like God so much, I want to tell people how wonderful God is. I enjoy God, so I will tell, keep telling people. If you are with me, you notice that I talk about God all the time. I really like God. So I have all the motivation in the world. Now one thing very important, difficulties doesn't mean God doesn't love us. Difficulties, it just came from sin. We all suffer. But God helps us in all difficulties. I went through difficult times too. And God blesses me when I trust in Him. So we have faith in God. Difficulties doesn't mean God doesn't love us. That's what hinders most people. Most people, because of difficulties, they say, God doesn't love me. But when we look at all the good things God has done, we will say, God really loves us. Where can we see God's love? Now, I hope this message about God's love is in all your message. Now, this is not just one message, but you can use it in all message. But where can we see God's love? Let's read the yellow words. Okay? First, in nature, and then the Bible, and then Jesus' redemption, close relationship with God, and then daily help from God. That we can see God's love and God's love in nature. We can enjoy that. Enjoy the fresh air this morning. Very wonderful, right? After the rain. And the Bible. When you read the Bible in the, in the light of His grace and mercy and His goodness and His righteousness, His holiness, you would really, from every verse, you can talk about the greatness of God. Now that's one way of my preaching called God's nature method of preaching. And that's something I like to, you know, actually I like to come back to do training for pastors and devoted Christians. That's what I want to do. What I want to do most are training so that people live in the love of God and the holiness of God and serve God with confidence. And then believe in, uh, in Jesus' redemption, we can see His great love. He, in, in heaven, he's, He enjoys Himself so much, He doesn't have to come and suffer for us and He became sin on the cross. And it became a curse for us on the cross. He doesn't have to be cursed, but He was willing to be cursed for us. And also, we can enjoy His love in the close relationship with God. Every time we pray, we can experience Him. And also in daily help from God. Let me tell you, three times, I was almost hit by a car. I could have died. One time, I was driving at high speed on the freeway. And I didn't know there was ice. Because there was no ice at all. But there was one place, suddenly there was some ice. And the car spin from one lane to another and then to the third lane. The moment I spin to that lane, I was, you know, I was turned around. And a big truck passed by right away. If I spin one split second later, later I would have been in heaven. And I thank God. And one time I was, a car was just about, 10 meters away from me, and it looked like we're gonna hit each other. And then suddenly, I don't know where, how he could find a way to turn away. And before that, I said, Lord Jesus, I didn't know I'm coming to you so soon. When we experience help like that, we say, God, you're so good. One time I pulled a garage door, and I, because the electric, you know, the electric plug was not working, and then I just think I put the finger in the gap and pull it out and pull out my finger, but the, the door was very, the garage door was very quick and caught my fingers, three fingers. And I was in great pain for a few months. And I said, if it has been stronger, I would have lost these three fingers. Mm. I thank God for these three fingers. <laughs> have you experienced help like that? Then mm. you say, God is so good. So I hope we all live in His love and really appreciate Him all the time. Now, prayer of grace and prayer of worship. That we can have prayer of grace to strengthen us. God is loving me. God is with me. God cares about me. God is a wonderful prayer in my life. So every day we pray like that. And you can teach your people to pray like that every day. When they wake up, when they are in difficult times, they say, God is loving me. God is a wonderful plan to help me. This prayer of grace. And then prayer of worship. I love you, Lord. And then I end in prayer that many people don't say, I need you, Lord. I want you. I like you. I'm happy to be with you. That is more personal. 
So these two kinds of prayers are for building up relationship. It will help you to build up relationship. And then the anointing of love, I noticed that a number of people I pray for, they experience the love of God. It's the glory of God. It's not my doing, it's God's work. And as I said before, I have nothing to boast about. It's all God's grace. God chose me when I was weak. And it's wonderful. But when I pray for people, I just think of God's love. Oh, I, <laughs> some people can experience the love of God. On uh, 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 Two days ago, there was a lady who came out, and then I just think of the love of God. And she suddenly felt the overwhelming love of God. Actually, there were a few. Too. They started to cry. The love of God came to them. So if we live in the love of God all the time, we'll have the anointing of love. And we have time later. I'm happy to pray for any one of you. Now here, change channel. <laughs> evangelism method called experience God evangelism that God has given me. A way that you can do it yourself and raise some people. And some of you may be doing it. But we can do it consciously. Intentionally. First, we can experience God. Now, let me... Uh, uh, want to say more about the living in the love of God. I want to say that many Christians live under the law. It's a lot of pressure. And when Christians or pastors live like that, they don't smile much. <laughs> They're always under pressure. It's always a lot of things to do. And that way what happens is, you know, what we say could give people pressure. But if we live in the love of God, whatever we say, God is so wonderful. God cares about you right now. And God wants to bless you. So when I want my people to pray, I don't just say, keep praying. How long do you pray? Every day. I don't ask questions like that. I would say, God loves you. God is very happy to bless you. God is waiting for you. When you pray, He's happy to bless you. So come to Him and He'll give you blessings. I always motivate people to follow God by His grace. For instance, when we serve God, God is very happy. God is, you know, everything we do, even a cup of cold water, He will bless us and reward us. So everything you do for God, He's very happy. And when you serve God, He is so happy He will bless you in many ways. So it's a blessing to serve Him. And to follow holiness. Many people don't like holiness of God. They like the love of God. They don't like the holiness. And then I will say, you look at heaven. Heaven is, you know, in heaven the people, you know, I don't know. You, you probably have some Christians who don't like you very much on earth. But when you go to heaven, when you see that person, if this is that person, that person will not turn his face away, away from you. When you see the person who doesn't like you on earth, when they see you in heaven, they will be, wow, you're here. I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> and they say, oh, you, do, you, do, you don't dislike me anymore? On earth you dislike me, but now you don't dislike me anymore? In heaven, everyone like, likes each other, each other. Everyone likes you. And you say, that is so wonderful. That is the goodness of holiness. When heaven is full of holiness, there's no more rejection, no more negative feelings. And that is wonderful about God's holiness. How about our families, our church, our daily life? Do we have negative feelings? Do people have negative feelings? A lot of Christians, even pastors, have negative feelings or negative conversation from time to time. But if we live in the love of God all the time, and live in the holiness of God all the time. Even when people mistreat us, we can still be nice to them. That there can be more and more love and holiness in our family. So for me, everything I say, I want to be positive, loving, kind, helpful. And make people feel good and feel happy. And I encourage. I encourage people to serve God. I encourage people to give their life to Jesus. By telling them, when you follow God's plan, that plan is the best for you. It's the most wonderful for you. It will make the best of your life. You, your life will go higher and higher. And God will bless you in every way. So I always motivate people with God's love. So I hope that you too can live in this teaching. Not just today, but every day. 
And then this experience guide evangelism is something very helpful that I'm, I'm sure that many of you pray for people with the experience guide. I'm going to explain this, the reason behind that, and then how you can train your members to do it. Now we've had all experience like inner healing, Isaiah 61, 1 to 3. I'm not going to read that, to heal the brokenhearted, to comfort all who mourn, and the joy oil of gladness. So God sent us to declare that, you know, to declare the liberty of Jesus Christ and to heal the brokenhearted. So Holy Spirit will do that for us. And peace, a lot of people experience peace. So we can tell them this Bible verse. Jesus said, peace I give to you. That it's God's plan to give us peace and inner healing. Now you can write these verses down. But actually these documents, I will give to pastor and then he will send it to you. And then release the burdens. Matthew 11, 28 to 30. All you who are weary and burden come to me and I'll give you rest. That many people say burdens go away. Or joy and comfort of body. That in Psalm 16, verse 8 to 9, that my body will also rest secure. Not only joy, but comfort to the body. That many people will experience a comfort to the body. Now for me, I experience that all the time. Right now, I'm feeling like floating. And I pray for many people and they feel like floating. Or I even pray for a cancer patient going through chemotherapy. And he said he was in great pain. And I prayed for him. And then he said the pain went away. I also prayed for a drug addict. And he said, wow, the comfort when you pray for me is better than when I take drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Because God really comforts our body. And then in Psalm 4, 8, that it will make us sleep well and also comfort to the body. And also body healing, Mark 16, that miracles will follow those who believe, that you cast out demons in my name and also you lay hands on the sick and they'll be healed. And then in Romans chapter 15, verses 8 to 19, it says that, it's not evangelism is not just by what we say but by what we said and done by the power of signs and miracles wonders that god's plan is that evangelism is by word and also by the power of the holy spirit and also also first corinthians chapter 2 verses actually 2 to 5 it talks about also the spirit's power the holy spirit's power so how we know that we can experience god's work the Holy Spirit work. Then what, what can we do? These are the steps. First, converse with a person, listen to his needs, and respond to his needs. Instead of saying, pray, we can say, oh, I know it's difficult. I know it's not easy when you go through difficult times like that. And, you know, when I hear your pain, I feel pain too. You know, when we can feel people's feeling, I will tell you, your wife and your husband will like you more. <laughs> when your husband is or a wife is unhappy, you say, oh, I'm sorry, I know that you're feeling unhappy. But very often, often we'll, we'll say to people, pray and you won't be unhappy. <laughs> people teach too much. But we can tell them, you know, we can listen to them and say, yes, I know your pain, I know your suffering. And then that way, it opens up the way to evangelism. And then you can share how we or someone experience similar problems and experience the help of God. And then invite Him. Are you willing that I pray for you? And then when we pray for someone, don't say many things, but just lead them to Jesus. Oh, Jesus right here. Jesus is blessing us right now. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is with us now, and He wants to bless us. And we can sing also. And when we sing, we can learn to sing softly. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Oh, Lord Jesus, you want to bless us. You want to comfort us. You want to take away our burdens. Oh, you're here with us. You want to bless us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When you pray like that, people can sense the love of God more when we're more relaxed. And then after the prayer, you ask Him, 
Please keep your eyes closed and have you experienced or felt anything during the prayer? And many people will say, I feel peaceful, quiet. And then you say, this is what Jesus said, peace I give to you. Burdens go away. That all you who are weary and burdened come to Jesus and you'll find rest. Or comfort, healing. Heal the brokenhearted. Or lay hand on the sick and they'll be healed. And then you say, well, Jesus has blessed you like that. Do you like Jesus to continue to bless you? And then if He's willing, then you lead Him to prayer, to confess Jesus as a Savior and tell them about Jesus. So this way, not only for you to do, you train your members. Then you have an army. Now when I bring someone to Jesus, I always pray for them too. I tell them about Jesus, I also pray for them. Now for people who don't have any special needs, I will tell them, you can experience God. You can experience His peace and His love and His kindness. You like me to pray for you. And then when they experience God, I, I lead them to Jesus. And then I will say, God wants to bless you more. God wants to live up your life and you can bless other people. So the moment I bring someone to Jesus or I help someone experience the Holy Spirit, I tell them, you can bless other people in the future. Do you want to? And then I train them. And then there are people who respond to us more. And then we organize them and then train them and then practice praying for each other and then go out to pray for other people. And you have an army to bring people to Jesus. And also we can train them in counseling, to listen to people. So this is a way that I build up ministry and train people. Now I'm going to tell you more, a, a few more of my teachings, but each one of this is what's just one slide. So just, uh, any questions so far? Anything you want to ask? Just now I talked about two things. First is living in the love of God. Being motivated by God. By God's love. And also having a life of love. Of God's love. A ministry of God's love. And the second is evangelism by the power of the Holy Spirit. And how can we have a strong anointing? By believing in God's love all the time. And worshipping with all our heart. All our soul. Oh, Jesus. When we do that, any moment, you know, any split second when I think of Jesus, immediately I can experience His, His love and peace. And you can do that too, when, the more you do it. And I'm happy to pray for anyone today. Okay, now here are some teachings that I just very briefly introduce, and maybe in the future sometime I'll come back. Now this one is to motivate people to serve God and follow God. It's very simple, five points. First, on the top, God sees everything, no one can escape His eyes. Now, many Christians think they can escape God's eyes. They will sin and they will commit adultery. They say, I'll ask Jesus to forgive me later. They don't think that Jesus can see. They, they want to believe in, you know, they think Jesus, you know, that, you know, I can do something and then I can cover it up. But Jesus always sees. And then on the right hand side, obeying God always brings blessings. We follow Him. And then serving God will bring rewards. That's what the Bible promised. And then on the left side, sinning brings destruction. And then not serving God can also bring destruction or even loss of salvation. So which way do you follow? So I tell people, very simple. But many Christians say, think, I will escape God's eyes. I will sin now. I won't follow God. So many people have this concept. They can run away from God. Because that's... That's a lie that many Christians believe. And then also another thing is, when we sin, many, maybe some of our co-workers in the church, they may be, um, at the same time, they fight against each other or gossip. And they think it's not serious. But I, I use this simple illustration. We're all building on the foundation of Jesus. If we build on the foundation of Jesus, and at the same time sin. Then we are building up and tearing down at the same time. Do you build a house and then you build half of it and then you tear it down, you build again and tear it down? You don't do that. And when we serve God and then we sin or have, you know, break up the unity, then we are tearing down. Then nobody builds like that. But many people do that in the church. When they serve God, they will look for girls and guys. They want to look for what they can get, even money. And God will give those to us. So this motivates people, don't sin while serving. Pastor told me, a pastor, 
give some money to a man and say, if I throw my jacket at you, you just fall down. And I'll give you some money for that. Uh, I said, why, did he, why does he do that? Does he think that God doesn't see it? Does he think that he can cheat God? What is the point of doing that? And also raise some people to serve God. This is what I, I told you earlier. Look at everything from God's perspective. This is another teaching. Very important. Because God is loving. God has everything in control. So any difficulty, I don't worry. I know God is a way. And God has a way to open up ministry for me and for you. To bless more people. So when we look at everything from God's perspective, we're not afraid of difficulties. We're not afraid of rejection. And we always believe we can go higher and higher and higher. So this in another teaching is a whole big teaching how to look at life from God's perspective and God has a plan in your church in your life you enter that God's plan is the best that can happen to us and our ministry is to let people know how wonderful God is it's not just telling you what to do many many people's ministry is like you don't do good you repent and follow them it's always repentance and obeying but the most important thing is to tell people how good our God is. From these two verses, you can see that. To, how, to see how good God is. And then people will change. Instead of just telling people what to change. And then so I have this God's nature preaching method. Every Bible verse I see, I can see God's nature. His love, His holiness. Sometimes it's not obvious. I have to look behind the verse. And all the time, I think about God's blessings all the time. And also the motivation to overcome sin. I will tell you, before I experienced the Holy Spirit, I have let myself sin many times. After I experienced the Holy Spirit, I can see how I can bless many people. And then I have this strong motivation. God loves me so much, He wants to use my life. I don't want to waste my life and any sin will destroy my life. So the key to overcome sins, any sinful thought that comes to my mind, immediately I say, this is my enemy. This will destroy me. In me, I hate it. For instance, if a beautiful woman, sexy woman appear in front of me, if I have any negative thoughts, in me, I say, this will destroy my life. I don't want to think about her. I will look at her as a person and bless her, but I will not have any sensual thought. I will reject it because I want my life to go higher. I don't want to make God unhappy. In me, I take care of that. When we take care of sins in our thought, when we dislike someone, immediately we say, if I don't like that someone, it's, it would damage me. So I don't want to dislike him. Even though it's not good, I still want to bless him and forgive him. And have compassion on them. Now, these are other things. I, I don't want to go through this, how to counsel. Many pastors counsel in a way that they just teach. But counseling is not teaching. It's when people at this point, you want them to go to a certain point, you need to break down what they believe. You need to listen to them. We need to listen to them and respond to their needs. And then and then let them know what are the, you know, guide them to understand the needs and then how to change. And then for tomorrow afternoon and evening, I'll do some training in counseling. That if you're interested, you can tell pastor and then you can come also. And how to overcome sin, I just talked about that. So um, uh, this is about conversation. How we can have words of grace and also words of the law. But words of the law, we can say it gently. I use an illustration. Sometimes someone tells the husband to, to take a garbage can. They will say, go take a garbage can. You never know what I need. Now, it's, it's a, you know, telling him to do something. But she can say like this, please take a garbage can for me. I'm very thankful for that. I'm helpful, thankful that you're helpful. So each word of the law we have to use every day, we can use it in a gentle way. But many people don't understand that. And that's why people fight and problems in the family. And with the law, we can explore how to solve problems. We can guide the other person. We can teach. We can request someone to do something. Sometimes we have to command. And then we sometimes have to accuse when people don't repent. But we can accuse in a gentle way. If you don't repent, God will... You know, God will seek after you and He will He can punish you. Do you want to face the punishment of God? Do you want to repent? And so we can say it in a gentle way. The words of law, the conversation is very important. But many people when they use when they talk 
Even when they talk about the love of God, they talk about the love of God like that. Don't you love God? Don't you know God loves you? It's in a way that people feel pressure. And Sam will say, God loves us so much. He's so happy that we turn to Him anytime. So I'm going to stop here. Just to let you know that there are, God has, after experience of the Holy Spirit, God has given me many teachings I like to share. And in the future, if I come back, if pastors and devoted people who are willing to learn, because sometimes members, uh, church members who are not willing to learn, they, they just learn and listen and look around and they don't really pay attention. But when people learn and use it in ministry, that's my purpose. Learn it and use it in ministry, that's something I want to do. And that will change a land. So I ask Pastor and you, uh, if you are willing to organize something like that in the future, I don't come for money, I come for free. I come just to bless. God has blessed me. I go everywhere, I go for free. And the purpose is just to fulfill God's plan. God wants to bless all of you. Amen. God wants to bless South Africa and all over the world. Let's close with a prayer. Would you rise? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh Lord Jesus, you're so wonderful. You're so wonderful. You're full of mercy and grace and love. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Lord Jesus, we need you. We need you. When we have you, we have everything. When we have you, our life will be full of joy and peace and will be easy. When we have you, our ministry will be easy. But so very often we have burdens. We have difficulties. Lord, we need you. We want you. Lord, we want you. We want you to bless us and help us. We want you to come and give us strength, to give us guidance, to use our life mightily, that we can always see God's goodness. God's grace and His holiness are so beautiful. Your wisdom is so beautiful. Everything about you is so beautiful. We want to live in you and to be guided by you and used by you to bless the people to see how wonderful God is. Oh, thank you, Lord, for everything. Thank you. We really like you. We really like you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus.